Uber really doesn't want you and me to be employees of Uber. So in an effort to quell this movement, uh, which seems to be sweeping the country, Uber has released an 18-page document called Working Together, in which they make nine uh, specific proposals to improve the workers' R situation. And in this video, I'm gonna break out those nine points and tell you what I think about them. And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you whether I think any of this is actually going to happen. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. On a beautiful Sunday morning, and we got some breaking news. Uh, you'll be seeing this video on Monday morning. And uh, Uber has put out this 18-page document called Working Together. And it's all about how uh, they want to improve this, the, the working environment for drivers. Let's get into some background. So unless you've been living under a freaking rock, right? Uh, states like California have passed laws, which uh, if Uber were to adhere to the strict rule of the, the letter of the law, uh, all the drivers would be employees, right? They don't want us to be employees because that would cost a lot of money, right? So uh, they're putting out this document and they're trying to kind of create an in-between category here for us. And uh, we're gonna jump right in to it right now. So number one, Uber's introductory tone. Okay, so this is important because they're really trying to create the experience for the drivers that they care. All right, so what you're seeing now is the title, Working Together, Priorities to Enhance the Quality and Security of Independent Work in the United States. And uh, I pulled one paragraph from the beginning. While digital apps and platforms have been and continue to be powerful forces for creating economic opportunity, it's clear that more should be done to improve the quality and security of platform work. The current health and economic crisis has brought into sharp focus the need for everyone, regardless of their employment status, to be able to find good quality, rewarding work, be able to, to work in the way they choose, and have access to adequate social protections and benefits. COVID-19 has revealed the fundamental inequity of our current employment system in which some workers get benefits and protections while others don't. Outdated legal frameworks are forcing platforms and workers to make a choice between flexibility or security at precisely the moment when both flexibility and security are needed. We can and must do better. All right, so, so basically they're saying because of COVID-19, Uber has seen the light, right? So governments and drivers have been saying something ain't right here for a long time, but now that COVID-19 has really put pressure on Uber uh, because it was really clear that if the government hadn't stepped in with the CARES Act on March 27th, drivers would not be getting any unemployment benefits. And that would have been horrible for millions and millions of drivers. So all of this pressure is now bearing down on Uber and this is their response. Okay, number two, what are Uber's specific proposals? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump on the computer and we're gonna go through each one, one by one. So this is number one, and this is word for word taken from uh, Uber's document. Number one, we want to contribute to funds that workers can individually direct toward the benefits that matter most to them. We are asking states to require our industry to, rec to accrue such funds. Okay. Fair game. So the funds will be paid uh, by the rider, sort of similar to how restaurants charge an extra three and a half percent to cover workers' health care. But instead of it going to health care, drivers will have the option to use it as they see fit. So it's basically like a cash bonus. And that's a good thing since, uh, according to our surveys, only 14 percent of drivers have health insurance. But it raises the question, of course, what's to prevent Uber from just lowering rates? All right. We're lowering how much they pay the drivers to offset that extra uh, money. Okay, number two, we wanna provide workers with occupational accident insurance that covers medical expenses and disability payments for accidents and injuries that occur while driving or delivering. We are asking states to require our industry to provide such coverage. So this sounds great. So if you or I get into an accident while driving for Uber, then we would get some level of support for medical and disability. 
but they do already have a program like this. It's called the Driver Injury Protection Plan. Uh, so it's not really clear how this is any different. Uh, again, though, Uber could just lower rates to offset this cost. The bigger question, though, in my mind is what would be the level of support? Would it be like a 100-day stipend uh, versus full coverage? And that makes a big difference. So we definitely need more details. Um, okay, number three, we're asking that all states extend laws to protect independent workers from discrimination, harassment, or prejudice. Of course, no argument here. Four, we will undertake a national survey of all drivers and delivery people to gather feedback on what we're doing well and how we can improve. So to me, this seems like a so what kind of proposal, you know, like so what? Whenever Uber or Lyft comes out with a new feature, they tell us they have a group of drivers with which they consult. And frankly, the drivers aren't that complicated, Uber. We want you to stop cutting our pay and eliminating our surge and decimating our bonuses. So note to Uber, it's all about the money. There, you, know, you can save yourself the money on the survey. Okay, number five. Uh, we will engage with representatives who can speak credibly to the interest of drivers and delivery people. Representatives with whom we can have an ongoing conversation and can hold us accountable. Okay, so is this, is this really necessary? So we, the drivers, have to hold Uber accountable? Is this the level of trust Uber has in its own ability to follow through on its commitments? Okay, certainly we would all like to have someone representing all the drivers and negotiations for benefits moving forward. Um, and as independent contractors, um, we're not allowed to form a union and come together with our grievances. And again, Uber has done this before with their driver advisory forum. Okay, number six, we will do our part to realize the nation's participatory democracy by helping every eligible driver or delivery person on our platform to register to vote. Okay, so I don't really see how this has anything to do with Uber, uh, but the company claims that because they have so much data on drivers, they'll be able to encourage help uh, more drivers to get to the polls. It's obviously a good thing, uh, but as Americans, we all have the right to vote. So if you want to register to vote, uh, the link is vote.gov, okay? All you got to do is go to type in vote.gov uh, on your browser. This page will come up and uh, you, you put in your state and find out how to register, okay? So go register to vote, okay? Don't, uh, don't depend on, on Uber to help you with that. Okay, number seven. Where data is available and reliable, we will provide transparency to drivers on what they can expect to earn. By the end of 2020, we commit to making the earnings estimator available to more than 40% of active U.S. drivers in more than 30 cities. All right, I don't, I don't even understand this, okay? Uh, what this has to do with drivers getting benefits similar to employees. So we drivers know each and every day what we earn right? We go out, we drive, we make our money, we cash out, okay? That's how much we made. We can divide that by the number of hours we worked, and we can see how much we make per hour. Then we can say, okay, that's how much I made per hour. So if I drive 30 hours, that's how much I'm going to make in a week, right? Um, so I don't really understand what, what this one's about. It doesn't seem like it's uh, uh, too useful. Number eight, we will continue to provide fast access to earnings and give earners the clarity and capacity to review and dispute inaccuracies. So this isn't new. The app already provides all this data and the ability to question. You can call in for support and, and dispute uh, anything that seems wrong. I've done this many, many times and it's nothing new. And finally, we, develop, we will develop opportunities and make investments to support drivers and delivery people in lifelong learning. So this is great. This is similar to Lyft's program to provide guidance for drivers that want to further their education. Um, these last three proposals, though, don't offer anything new that I can see. It seems like Uber needed to pad their proposals and added these to give the impression of a full slate of driver benefits. Okay, so that's it. So those are the nine proposals. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, it's a little light on details. I think we can all agree on that. Yes, some of the proposals are like, so what? And some of them could be really good for drivers, right? So unfortunately, it's hard to trust Uber. I've been driving for four years. I drove for four years and uh, 
and over those four years, I watched my pay get cut and cut and cut. There used to be beautiful surges, surge, cut, cut, cut. Beautiful bonuses, cut, cut, cut. All these things. So Uber has a track record of not looking out for us, the drivers, but rather kind of treating us as a commodity and expense that they need to reduce. And for that reason, I'm very uh, hesitant to believe uh, Uber's intention. To be as transparent as possible, the only reason Uber is even doing this is because they have to. There's just uh, laws are starting to, to force them to, um, courts are going after them, uh, public opinion is going after them. This COVID-19 has really made it apparent that the drivers are a class of workers that have no protections, yeah? And we are treated like employees for the most part by these companies. So that's, that's the pickle that they're in, and this is what they've come up with. So we'll see. I'm, I'm very doubtful, but um, I'm open to be, being surprised. I'm just gonna end with saying there's a phrase which I'm very fond of, which is, talk is cheap and action is rare and precious, all right? Hey everybody, this is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. When you click like, that allows, uh, gives it more air so more people can, can see the video, and I would really appreciate that. Y'all go out and have a great day. Be safe out there.